logic 5 is one of the most important ones if you actually ask me in subject of agreement in fact in many competitive examinations one question on this particular concept is always a must it says whenever the sentences or subjects what you're talking about in a sentence are joined with either or neither nor whether or not only but also not but no sooner than later both and just as or just so just rather than okay if you're very interested to know what are this all about we actually call them as correlative conjunctions the beauty of correlative conjunctions is every time when you see any of these correlative conjunctions you will come up with a situation what is the situation you will always come up with two subjects followed by one word so let's directly take up the example and understand what i am talking look at the first sentence it says not only julie but also all of the grandchildren want to visit grandma right so not only but also is a correlative conjunction one thing what you have to notice over here is the moment the sentence has not only but also the entire scenario is actually changing so far whatever we discussed in every sentence there was a sen subject there was a verb we found out whether it was singular singular or plural plural if it was not we actually try to match them with each other with a correction that's what we have been doing which is very easy actually right but right now we have a scenario which is entirely different what is the scenario we are not only talking about julie but also talking about all the grandchildren right so let's mark julie as subject 1 let's mark grandchildren as subject 2 because we are not only talking about julie which is our subject but also talking about grandchildren which is also our subject now understand julie is singular or plural singular grandchildren is singular or plural plural what's the verb in the sentence as you don't see any helping verb definitely we have to consider the main verb right so the main verb here is want want is our verb want is singular or plural plural because there is no s the moment you add s to want it becomes wants which will lead the word wants to become the singular word right we have right now only want all right so want is of a verb and want is plural now we have a situation we have first of all two subjects in the sentence and second of all one subject is singular and other subject is actually plural and we have only one verb which says plural the biggest question mark over here for all of us is should i decide the verb in the sentence based on subject 1 or subject 2 or should i take both the subjects into consideration what exactly is the answer the answer is very very simple which is what the logic is all about the logic tells us over here whenever you come across a situation where you have subject 1 and subject 2 one is singular and one is plural or could be even the other way around one is plural and one is singular doesn't matter where you have only one verb always decide the verb based on that subject which is very close to the verb oh did we speak something very difficult to understand no it's actually very easy look at this we have the verb want right now ask one question want is close to grandchildren or want is close to julie we can easily see here on the screen want is definitely close to in fact very very close to grandchildren grandchildren is singular or plural plural want is singular or plural plural are they matching with each other definitely yes it means the agreement is absolutely perfect right so this is how it actually works out in the form of logic 5 let's apply the same in the second sentence not green beans but pumpkin is my favorite so this time we are using the correlative conjunction not but once again the same situation we are not only talking about green beans 
let's name green beans as subject 1 but also talking about pumpkin let's name it as subject 2 green beans is plural pumpkin is singular what is the verb in the sentence verb is actually is singular not plural singular now on what basis should i decide is is it based on pumpkin or is it based on green beans the answer is very very simple we have to decide is based on that subject which is very close to is now ask a question is is close to pumpkin or is it close to green beans definitely you can see it over here it's actually close to pumpkin pumpkin is singular or plural singular is is singular or plural singular are they matching with each other yes this is something very very tricky look at the third sentence neither miss brown nor jane writes on the blackboard so this time the correlative conjunction what we have in the sentence is neither nor so once again same situation we are not only talking about miss brown which is subject one but also talking about jane which is subject two miss brown is singular or plural singular jane is singular or plural singular what is the verb in the sentence writes apply s theory writes is singular or plural definitely singular so now on what basis i have to decide you don't have to break your head here at all do you know why i think you are missing out the most beautiful part of the entire story over here subject one is also singular subject two is also singular so whether you decide the verb based on subject one or subject two the answer will be same that is singular is our verb singular here yes so the answer is absolutely right logic five is applicable only when you have a sentence where subject one is singular and subject two is plural where you have only one verb you have to decide that based on that subject which is close to the verb right this is what we discussed so far or it could be even applicable in a scenario where subject one is plural and subject two is singular and you have once again only one verb so again you have to decide the verb based on that subject which is very close to the verb right so that is something what is that is something what we all know over here so when it will not be applicable when you can use your common sense very simple let's say subject one and subject two both are singular so it is a simple common sense to understand your verb has to be singular let's say subject one and subject two both are plural and you have only one verb definitely your verb will be plural okay so when you have singular singular plural plural combination unnecessarily do not waste your time just go and check whether the verb is singular or not or plural or not that's more than sufficient now let's take up one more interesting question over here which will help us to understand this much better just as the brazilians love soccer so the indians love cricket correlative conjunction what i'm using in the sentence is just as followed by so right so as you can see once again we are not only talking about brazilians but also talking about brazilians is subject one indians is subject two brazilians singular or plural definitely plural indians singular or plural certainly plural what is the verb did you notice something right next to brazilians you can see love right next to indians you can see one more love so you actually have two subjects followed by two verbs so let's mark love which is next to brazilian as verb one let's mark love which is next to indians as verb two love is singular or plural plural once again here also it is plural so now ask the question brazilian singular or plural plural v1 that is verb one singular or plural plural are they matching with each other yes indians singular or plural plural love singular or plural plural are they matching with each other definitely yes we have a scenario here where we have two subjects followed by two verbs okay the only thing what we have to check is whether the verb this particular verb what we are using it 
for a particular subject are they matching with each other or not is the only check what you have to make over here logic 6 what does it say it says along with as well as together with including in addition to not less than and accompanied by are conjunctions which are actually called as tricky conjunctions okay so whenever you see any sentences which has any of these there is something what you all need to follow point number one remember all these conjunctions are always singulars that is the first thing what you need to understand so i'm trying to tell you along with a singular as well as a singular together with a singular including a singular in addition to a singular not less than a singular accompanied by is also singular point number two what you need to understand is these words are definitely not equivalent to and because some of us are living with the assumption we think along with is equal to and and is equal to along with some people even think as well as is equal to and and is equal to as well as that's exactly is what we need to change immediately and along with are two different words and is plural along with is actually singular that's the second thing what you need to understand so let's understand this with an example okay so here right now on the screen we can see two sentences the first one says tom and jerry are playing cricket one of the rare scenarios which you would never get to see while watching tom and jerry cartoon for sure look at the second sentence it says tom along with jerry is playing cricket so in one sentence i've used and which we know which we have been using left right and center in our day-to-day -day conversation in the other sentence i have replaced the word and with along with one of the words what we saw in the list few seconds ago look at the beauty over here the moment i replaced and with along with there are certain changes which are happening in the sentence externally can you see which are they the first change is the moment i used and here we used r which is a verb the moment i used along with in the place of r you are actually able to see is one more thing look at the first sentence except a period at the end as a punctuation i have not used any other punctuation marks at all but the moment i replaced and with along with automatically two extra commas are coming into picture now the question is why are these two commas and how are these two commas so we will actually talk about why these commas are applied in the sentence and how to apply these commas if we, we are framing the same sentence with along with or as well as or together with or including etc okay let's talk about the same remember in this particular scenario the first comma is always applied to make you understand whatever is written before the first comma should only be considered as your subject i repeat the first comma in this particular scenario is always applied to make you understand whatever is written before the first comma should only be considered as your subject in the sentence so why do we apply the second comma the second comma is applied in this scenario to make us all understand whatever is written after the first comma and before the second comma is additional information it's actually additional information i usually call it as junk so here in the sentence along with jerry which is written after the first comma before the second comma is additional information is junk on which you are not supposed to break your head at all now read the sentence without that tom is playing cricket now tell me what is the subject in the sentence tom singular or plural definitely singular what is the verb in the sentence is singular or plural singular 
Are they matching with each other? Yes, they are. So the agreement is absolutely perfect. Okay. Do you know what happened here? Very simple. So far, in every sentence what we discussed, right? We had one subject, we had a verb. And if you have noticed something, every time the verb used to be always very close. In fact, it used to be always, it used to be next to the subject for sure. Correct? But now, in this sentence, in this particular pattern, what we are discussing, the scenario is actually different. What has happened? The subject is here. The verb is here. Intentionally, a gap has been created between the subject and the verb. And this gap has been filled with so much of information, which I called it as additional information, that your brains will not be able to connect the subject with the verb directly. Because of which, we end up giving the wrong answer. So, the moment you kill the gap in this particular scenario and connect the subject with the verb directly, automatically, easily, in a very simple manner, you'll be able to find out the answer. Exactly in the same way how we found out the answer here. Before we could apply what we discussed into practice, I want to even teach you how to apply the commas in the sentence. In case you are framing a sentence with any of these words, you can see on the screen, you should know how to apply the commas too. And I have always seen in many competitive examinations, they will intently miss applying these two commas so that you get confused very fast. Okay, so keeping all these factors in mind, let's even learn how to apply the commas too. Remember, the first comma should always be applied right before the conjunction. So I mean to say just before along with, just before as well as, just before together with, just before including, just before in addition to, just before not less than, just before accompanied by. Okay, so the first comma should always be applied in this particular scenario right before the correlative conjunction. The second comma should be applied just before the verb. Just before the verb. For example, just before is, just before has, just before are, just before have. Any verb for that matter. Any helping verb or maybe main verb for that matter. Okay. So the first comma should be applied just before the correlative conjunction. The second comma should be applied just before the verb. Okay. So now let's apply both what we discussed so far into sentence. Read the first sentence here. It says, the child together with his parents and grandmother is going to the beach. The moment you look at the sentence, our brains will automatically start working like, okay, we have child one, parents two, grandmother one, one plus two plus one is equal to four. So we are talking about four people. Definitely the verb has to be plural. This is how our brains will start making the calculation. That's what exactly is the pattern what we need to break right now. So let's understand this appropriately. Did you notice something? In the sentence, we have a correlative conjunction called together with. I told you the moment you have any of these correlative conjunctions written on the screen, two comma, commas are a must. Do we see the commas? No. Right? So let's apply the comma. What did I say? The first comma should be applied just before the correlative conjunction. What is the correlative conjunction in the sentence? Together with. So just before correlative conjunction should be the first comma. Where should be the second comma? Just before the verb. What is the verb in the sentence? Is. You can see it here. So let's apply second the second comma just before is. So what is the understanding here? We know very well. Whatever is written after the first comma, before the second comma is additional information, is junk on which we are not supposed to break our head at all. So, leave this particular part and read the sentence. What is the sentence? It says, the child is going to the beach. Now, tell me, what is the subject in the sentence? Child, singular or plural? Singular. What is the verb in the sentence? Is singular or plural? 
Singular. Are they matching with each other? Definitely yes. So in the entire sentence, our subject is only the word child. Let's go to the next example. Shashi along with Niru has planned up a party. Once again, we have a correlative conjunction called along with, but the commas are missing. So let's apply. Where should be the first comma? Correct. You are absolutely right. It should be right before along with. Where should be the second comma? Right before verb. What is the verb in the sentence? Has. So let's apply it right before has. So what is the understanding? Whatever is written after the first comma and before the second comma is not important. So based on this, what is our subject? Shashi. Singular or plural? Singular. What is the verb? Has. Singular or plural? Singular. Are they matching with each other? Definitely yes. So the agreement is absolutely perfect. Go to the next one. The students in addition to the teacher are all receiving special recognition for their excellence. For their excellent research. The correlative conjunction in addition to and we can even notice over here the commas are missing. Right. So let's apply the commas first. Where should be the first comma? Right before the correlative conjunction that is right before in addition to. Where should be the second comma? Right before the verb. What is the verb here? R. So right before R should be the second comma. And whatever is written after the first comma and before the second comma is additional information which is not important to us. What is the subject here? The subject is actually students. Singular or plural? Plural. What is the verb? R. Singular or plural? Plural. Are they matching with each other? Yes. 90% of time you will get to see one question either in the form of sentence correction or in the form of error spotting based on logic 6 for sure. So logic 5 and logic 6 are very very important out of all the logics what we discussed until now. Logic 7 is even interesting. In fact this is one of my favorites when it comes to subject verb agreement for sure. Just write every some, any, and no. On the right hand side, write one thing and body. Okay, so this is how it works out everyone, everything, everybody, someone, something, somebody, anyone, anything, anybody, no one or none, nothing, nobody. So 4 into 3, how many words total? 12 words. So now we have reduced the burden. Okay. Plus either, neither, every, each. So plus 4. These words are actually called as indefinite pronouns. What is so special about indefinite pronouns? Why are we discussing this here in subject verb agreement? Very simple. Remember, First thing what you need to understand is all the indefinite pronouns are always singular. All these 16 words which are grammatically called as indefinite pronouns are actually singular words by nature. That's the first thing what you have to lock it in your brains. Okay. So what we need to learn here specifically under the umbrella subject verb agreement is whenever the sentence starts with any of these indefinite pronouns remember the verb whatever you are going to use will be singular in fact should be singular look at the first sentence it says each of the students is intelligent in the class okay in this sentence the word students is actually attracting us more than the word each and if you take students into consideration, you will definitely end up giving the wrong answer because students originally is a plural word. Students is plural. Then definitely you can't say students is. You have to say students are. So definitely you will end up giving the wrong answer. So this is not how the calculation goes over here. Very simple. Go back to what we learned under logic 3 where we spoke about one of. You remember? One of my friends, one of my colleagues, one of your classmates, one of the players, etc. Ditto. 
So pattern is same, but in the place of one, actually we have each, which is an indefinite pronoun and all the indefinite pronouns are always singular, correct? So the subject here is not students, the subject is each. Each is singular or plural? Certainly singular. Why? Because each is an indefinite pronoun, right? What is the verb? Is singular or plural? Singular. Are they matching with each other? Definitely yes. So agreement is absolutely perfect. Let's take up the next sentence. Every problem has a solution. One of our favorite sentences which we love to use it on people who are going through one or the other kind of issues. But one of the sentences which we never apply it in our lives, unfortunately. Okay, so what is the subject in the sentence? The subject is the word every. Singular or plural? You can see that word here in the list. Definitely singular. What is the verb? Has. Singular or plural? Singular. Are they matching with each other? Certainly yes. Look at the third one. Everybody seems to be busy. So what is the subject in the sentence? Everybody. Singular or plural? Singular. Why? Everybody is an indefinite pronoun. What is the verb? Seems. Singular or plural? Singular. Are they matching with each other? Definitely yes. Look at the fourth one. Something was getting cooked up. What is the subject? Something. And that something could be anything. None of our business. But something is our subject in the sentence. Singular or plural? Singular. What is the verb? Was. Singular or plural? Singular. Are they matching with each other? Definitely yes. So the agreement is absolutely perfect. Look at the last one. None had time to go. Understand? None is actually the short form of no plus one. No one is equal to none. None is equal to no one. No one is also singular. None is also singular. Okay. Remember none and no one both are always singular words because they are indefinite pronouns. Okay. So, none is our subject, singular or plural, singular. Had is our verb, singular or plural, singular. We know very well when subject is singular, had becomes singular. When subject is plural, had becomes automatically plural, right? So, are they matching with each other here? Yes. So, the agreement is absolutely perfect. 